Hello everybody, it's the year to you, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In today's video, we'll be finally exploring this area. We'll be exploring the Lineiru Heights and the Lineiru Promenade. Promenade. Pr that place. Yeah. <laughs> I can never pronounce that pl the name of that place on my first try. But anyway, in today's video, we'll be exploring that area, and you may be wondering why are we starting off in Kakariko Village. First of all, I want to demonstrate the fact that you can actually talk to Dorian and his daughters over here. Oh, you're running in place! That's adorable! You look like you're playing Ring Fit Adventure or something like that. Are you taking a break as well, Master Link? If so, allow me to introduce my precious daughters, Coco and Kotla. Any moment I could spend with my girls is a gift. I always end up boring them with the same stories, though. What stories? There's a shrine right above the hill, guarding the Sheikah tribe. Sometimes from the forest behind it, you can hear... A WOMAN SOBBING! <laughs> That's the story I'm telling the children right now, anyway. Actually, the location I speak of is where the village's guardian spirit resides. But lately, monsters have been lurking there, and it's become quite dangerous. I'm scaring my daughter so they won't go near the forest. It works on Coco, but for some reason, those stories just excite Coco. <laughs> uh, I was one of those kids. I was always told that not to go in this one area because it's all scary and stuff like that. But then I was all like, hey, 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 hey. challenge accepted. I'm not a good influence. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to start off in Kakariko Village in today's episode is because up here by the Great Fairy Fountain is a great starting point for where we'll be going in today's video. So, just a heads up, this video will only contain side quests and things like that. We will not have any story progress whatsoever. So, if you're looking for story progress, then you've come to the wrong place. But this is Breath of the Wild, so everybody loves Breath of the Wild. <laughs> We can see the Great Fairy Fountain right there. If you want to upgrade your stuff, we go ahead and do that. I will not be doing that though because I don't feel like it. So we'll be going over this way. And if you've seen the Hatsuno Korok episode, this area may seem familiar to you. We can see one of those block puzzles right there where you can see a Korok up there already. So that's pretty nice. And hooray, the immersion has been broken. <laughs> Lineiru Road, West Gate. And right now, we have uh, some branching paths. We could go over this way, but I'm gonna go this way first. Right after we talk to this dude over here. About a year ago, I was walking along the road here at night, when I suddenly saw a blinding light in the sky. When my eyes finally adjusted, I found myself looking at a shimmering object floating overhead. I couldn't look away. The next thing I knew, I was bathed in light. When I came to, I woke up in bed covered in sweat. Hmm? What do you think of that? Da da da! That's what I think of that. At first I thought it was just a bad dream, but the bed I woke up in wasn't my bed. It was a bed full of liquid in an empty room, and when I looked in the corner, there was a weird glowing device. And when I touched the device, I was overwhelmed with the feeling of familiarity. When I came to, I was here. What do you think of that? I already told you, dot dot dot. Why some um, Hylian champion? Your story ends here, hero boy! Saying hero boy makes me think of Metal Face and Xenoblade when he's like, Fancy meeting you here, Monado boy! I do not have weapon equipped. So, yeah, let's take care of you. We've already seen these plenty of times before, but uh, there's a side quest in an upcoming video where I need to grab the bow that these guys drop, so I was hoping you to drop that, but you only had the Vicious Sickle thing, uh, which we do not be need, by the way. I don't want that, so you can go away. <laughs> And as we continue on over this way, I would just like to let you know that everything we're doing in this video could have been done a long time ago. There was no prerequisites for anything we'll be doing in today's episode. It's just that I felt now was probably a good opportunity to take care of this stuff because we're already doing a bunch of side activities already right now. So right now will probably be a good opportunity to take care of all this stuff. This guy right here, he will give you directions on where you can go around the area. 
Uh, they'll tell you about the Lady River Tower that's not too far. What's over this way? Yeah. Oh, this is just one of the springs where we can find one of the Koroks. Yay! More immersion breaking. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we can see the Lady River Tower over there if you want to use that as a reference point for where we currently are located out on the map. Then that's pretty fun indeed. But. The big thing that I want to explore in this area is going to be located over here. Oh, pardon me. I didn't think anyone was around. That... that there on your hip. No, I'm sorry. It's nothing. I didn't mean to pry. Are you a bird? Have you never met a Rito before? Odd. My name is Cass. As a bard, I spend my days traveling this land in search of ancient songs. Have you heard of the ancient songs of Hyrule? No. Ancient songs. Songs that sing the praise of a hero who beat back the calamity in an age past. I know a song about this place. Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Let's hear it. Excellent. Without further ado. I suppose the lush of green could refer to this place, but what sort of beast wears a crown of bone? That's definitely a secret hiding here, but it's beyond me. May the light illuminate your path. Cass is a fan favorite among Breath of the Wild players, and he certainly deserves it because he's a really cool character. I'm just going to let you know though, get used to seeing him because he is involved in a lot of shrine quests. I'm honestly surprised it took us this long to even find him. <laughs> Part of that was intentional, though, because there is one point where we can meet him at a certain stable. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. I'll have a caption on screen, on screen right now. Caption on screen, on screen right now. That is a redundant sentence. <laughs> but, yeah, that the reason why I didn't want to show that one was because it's kind of a repeat of the cutscene Impa shows us when we first meet her in Kakariko Village. And I remember my first playthrough that triggered twice. So I don't know if that was just a glitch or that actually does happen, but... I didn't want to get too repetitive. The deer disappeared! Stupid deer. How dare you. <laughs> but yeah, whenever you hear the accordion music in the overworld, chances are you'll probably come across Cass around the area, so just look around for him and you'll be able to find him at some point. It might take a moment for me to find... Well, there's one right here, but there might take... Ah, no! Don't you dare disappear! Don't you dare disappear, you stupid reindeer! So one thing worth mentioning about the deer in this game is that uh, if one of them gets uh, scared, chances are the ones surrounding them will also start running too. If you're having trouble trying to catch one, what I recommend you do is I recommend you try to lure it towards a corner so they'll have to turn around. That usually works for me, so yay, it worked in this case. Whee! <laughs> Alrighty then, so as we go across this area. This is the deer that uh, we were looking for. It has to be one with antlers, so if you try getting another one, it's probably not going to work. In this sense, that is just so pretty! This is such a pretty game! Now, if I wanted to be a jerk, I could jump off the deer and then uh, go, 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 reindeer, deer, whatever you are, go. Aren't you going? Mush, mush, mush. Okay, you're not fine. <laughs> I was trying to spare your life, but no, stupid deer. Now I feel horrible. <laughs> 
I was about to say that I could be a jerk and just jump off it and then turn it into my dinner. But then I did it anyway, but the reason why I didn't want to was because they sound so sad when they die and now I feel horrible. To you that for the shrine, I am Mizzolel, in the name of the goddess I the I offer this trial. Ancient Trifecta, Mizzolel Shrine. Mizzolel kind of sounds like the name of an Alpon from Xenoblade. <laughs> it's the second time that I mentioned Xenoblade in this recording session. <laughs> in case you can't tell what I've been what I've had on my mind lately. <laughs> so this uh, shrine We're gonna be taking care of this twice. Now the reason for that is because We'll be taking care of this the way that they probably intended you to do it, but then we're gonna do it the way that's more fun. So the primary gameplay gimmick with this one is there's gonna be a laser beam thingy over there, and when it activates the switch over there, this platform will rotate. Now, there are a couple ways you could activate that uh, laser beam thingy. You could do what I'm doing is use stasis. I'm using that because it saves on arrows. You can also use arrows if you want, or you can use uh, the metal block and use that to kind of block the laser and then move it out of the way to make it trigger again. This is a good strategy too, but remember that... Stupid metal treasure chest. But yeah, remember that magnesis can only go so far. Fine then. That's stupid metal treasure chest is not as just does not want to be my friend. It's very rude. But we activated the thing anyways, who cares? I'll tell you who cares. I cares! Because, thanks to the super handy dandy powers of reloading save files, we can go back in time and do this the fun way. I've been at this for like 10 minutes. I'm really, really hoping this works. So, Use stasis on that, and then what I like to do is I like to do a jumping attack like that to create, cause some damage. And then, after that, we'll be able to use uh, one of the remote bombs. And it worked! Finally! <laughs> it finally worked! My goodness, that trick has been driving me crazy! But I finally got to work. Now, there is another version of this which can make you go even higher. I'm not good enough to do this, but something really cool is if you do it just right, it is actually possible to leave the ceiling of this place and freely explore outside of the shrine. I'm going to be doing this on my own time, and if I can get it to work, I will have video footage on screen right now. And if it's not in this video, maybe in a future video, I don't know, but I will try to get it to work because it's such an awesome trick, and I know it's possible. I just have never been able to do it myself because I'm bad at video games. Immediately after we completed the Mezzolo Shrine, and certainly not later in the recording session, but I decided to structure the video a little bit differently, we're gonna be going over this way now. And I wanna be careful because, well, just take a look at what happened on screen. We're gonna be going over this way now. Stupid keys are rude. Get away from me. Reason? 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 No! Reason? Oh no! I'll save you with the magic of reloading a save file! Yeah, your horse can actually die. And it is incredibly morbid, and I do not like it at all. Luckily, though, there is a way you can save your horse even after they're gone. We will be going over this a little bit later when it becomes a bit more relevant. But just know, if you lose a horse, it's not the end of the world. First of all, you can find more. And also, if you were really attached to a specific horse, there is a way to get it back. So, we go over this way. We could see the Akala re uh, Tower off in the distance over there. We could see the bridge. Actually, wait, that's not a call at all. That's the Zora's Domain. 
gate bridge thing. Zora's Domain's over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that... <laughs> uh, future Lady Gary, do you... Can you zoom in on that over there? Because the way that character moved and, like, suddenly went back in place, that was already really, really funny. <laughs> So we'll be going over this way now, and there is one more shrine that will be taken care of over this way before we head back over to where we were a moment ago. If my stupid pony will go. Pony, come on. Who's a good little pony? Who's a cute little pony? Who's my little pony? That's a TV show. I had a friend who was like super into that show, and I... I I, I can certainly see the appeal of it. I've never really been into My Little Pony myself, but he seemed like he was already interested in that show, so I don't know. This is coming from the guy who's in, who watches Mir Miraculous Ladybug, so who am I to judge? <laughs> uh, right then, so the big uh, gameplay gimmick with uh, getting to this shrine is that there's going to be some spiky plants uh, that are not going to be very pleasant at all. Now, if you want to do this, uh, the cheating method, then you could find a cliff around here and then just paraglide over the spikes. That's what I usually do. But because this is a walkthrough, I figured it might be a good idea to do this the way that you intend to do it. Five Flames, Ruko Mag Shrine. Now, I was watching a video not too long ago that was describing a way you can do a shortcut in this area. I think I can do it. I don't have the skills to do it though, so I'm gonna try for a little bit. If I can't do it, then we'll just do it the way you're supposed to. Let's switch over here. Thankfully, I got some arrows off screen, so that's going to be pretty nice indeed. So basically, what we want to do is you want to have the fire and stuff like that. Uh, you want to make it so that the fire lights up the torches and stuff like that. And unfortunately, you have that water thingy you have to deal with, but luckily, we should be okay dealing with stuff like that. Let's go over there. That should burn up the platform, and we'll be able to go that way. If we had fire arrows, then that would be a lot easier, but unfortunately we don't, so we have to do with the best that we can have, or whatever the phrase is. We got a new bow, that's pretty good. We ended up breaking one a moment ago, so... It's always never a pleasant experience, or something like that. <laughs> Alright. So I'm pretty much going to be fast forwarding the rest of this uh, because it could take a little while to figure this out. So... Well, first of all, I should mention that the arrows are here. Whenever you fire the platform, um, it's going to rotate in that direction. So if I were to aim at the one on the right right now, it will spin uh, clockwise and the torch will go out. So we don't want that to happen. So as we go across this area, I guess now is a good time to explain a bit of a fun story. So... This uh, shrine may seem a little familiar to people who've been watching my channel for a little while. And the reason for that is because I actually used footage of my first playthrough of the shrine during a discussion video. Back before the collab channel was a thing and all discussion videos were moved over to there. So, um, I believe it was the discussion where James and I were giving our first impressions on the Nintendo Switch as a whole because we were the first two members of game who got a Switch. Uh, so, I remember that was always a pretty fun experience. So, yeah, that's uh, it's pretty fun. That's pretty fun to think back on. I am glad that we moved the 
discussions over to the collab channel because even though they were pretty fun having on everybody's channel and stuff like that it did kind of get a little bit repetitive having the same video upload across multiple channels so i am glad that uh, we ended up uh, switching um that format <laughs> I did the thingy! Yay! I could have done it the cool way the stupid trick would work, but hopefully at some point in the near future, before I go to edit this video, I'm able to get the footage of that. If not, then I'll probably use footage from somebody else's channel, and of course I'll give credit because it's rude not to do that. <laughs> yeah, Sorry if I got a little bit uh, frustrated right there, but you have to understand. This entire recording session, it's about an hour and a half for just this one video. Ah, oh boy. I woke up today thinking about this video. I was like, oh, that won't take too long to record. I could probably get this done in like half an hour. Nope.